Start recording. Start recording. Camera choose. Stop recording. Button. Okay. Hello, everybody. We are live from the wilds of my dining room, which is slightly, uh, well, kind of messed up because my kitchen is still under renovation and there's a pile of junk in here. Hopefully you can't see that. I know I can, so I guess what you don't see can't bother you. So we're here. Actually, it can bother you. Let me tell you, it, it really can and it does. But anyway, we are here. We're into the third volume of our book. Well, it says it's only in two volumes, but we're the third one's in my hand. So here we are. So we are kicking it off where we left off. Only, oh, hold the phone. It says here, Diary of a Wimpy Kid Dog Days by Jeff Kinney. Got to get the important stuff out of the way. And now we're off to the races. July, Saturday. Last night, I was working on a new comic to replace Lil Cutie. I figured there would be a lot of competition for the open slot. So I wanted to come up with something that really stood out. I made up this comic called Hey People that's sort of like a half cartoon, half advice column. I figure I can use it to make the world a better place or at least a better place for me. A comic strip picture shows a queue in a fast food restaurant. There are two customers in front of Greg with the first one saying, um, um let's see, I guess, hmm. The caption says, when ordering from a fast food, ow a fast food restaurant, try to decide what you want before you get to the front of the line. The next picture shows two men sitting in a pizza restaurant. Greg sits behind them, eating. One man tells the other, my toenail is so so ingrown, it took the doctor an hour to dig it out. The caption says, When in public, kindly refrain from discussing details of your recent surgery. I figured since Dad reads the comics, I might as well write a few that were specially targeted at him. The picture shows Greg in the shower, holding a bar of soap covered in hair. The caption says, After you're done with your shower, please rinse your hair off the soap. I would have wrote, written a bunch of comics last night, but Sweetie was driving me crazy, and I couldn't concentrate. While I was drawing the... The dog was sitting on my pillow, licking his paws and his tail, and he was really getting into it. Whenever Sweetie does that, I have to remember to flip the pillow over when I go to bed. Last night, I forgot, and when I lay down, I put my head right on the wet spot. Speaking of licking, Sweetie finally kissed Dad last night. It's probably because Dad had crisps on his breath, and I think dogs have an automatic response to that sort of thing. I didn't have the heart to tell Dad that Sweetie had just spent the last half hour on my pillow licking his rear end. Anyway, I'm hoping I can write a few more comics tonight because I'm not going to be able to get any work done tomorrow. Tomorrow's the 4th of July and mom is making the whole family go to the town pool. I tried to get out of it mostly because I wanted to make it through the summer without having to talk walk past the shower guys, but I think mom still 
Mom's still hoping to have one perfect family day this summer, so there's no use fighting it. Monday. My 4th of July started out pretty rough. When I got to the pool, I tried to get through the locker room as quickly as I could, but the shower guys were really chatty and they didn't make it easy on me. Shower guy. Hey, Greg, how's the family? Then mom told me she let her, or left her sunglasses out in the car, so I had to go back through the shower area to the parking lot. I wore mom's sunglasses on the return trip to make it clear I wasn't interested in conversation, but that didn't work out so good either. Shower guy. Hey, Greg, where do you get those cool shades? Seriously, I wish those guys would just take a shower at home before they came to the pool, because once you see somebody like that, you can never look at them the same way again. Guy stands near Greg with one foot on a chair whilst applying sun cream. Guy. Mind if I borrow this chair for a sec? After, a, after I got past the locker room, things didn't get a whole lot better. The scene was just about how I remembered it, except more crowded. I guess everyone had the same idea to spend the fourth at the pool. The only time the pool cleared out was when the lifeguard called a 15 minute rest break and all the kids had to get out of the water. I think the idea behind rest breaks is to give adults a little time to enjoy the pool, but I don't know how they they're supposed to relax with 300 kids waiting for the break to be over. When I was younger, I used to just go swim in the baby pool during the 15 minute rest break, but that was before I knew what went on in there. A boy, mom, mama, I'm peeing the only area of the pool that wasn't a complete madhouse was the deep end, and that's where the diving boards are. I haven't been in the deep end since I was eight years old when Roderick talked me into jumping off the high dive. Roderick was always trying to get me to jump off the high dive, but that tall ladder really scares me. He told me I needed to conquer my fears or I'd never become a man. Then one day Roderick told me that there was a clown at the top of the diving board who was handing out free toys and that got my attention. But by the time I realized Roderick was full of baloney, it was too late. Roderick shoved Greg off the top of the diving board. Roderick, go! Anyway, today mom got everyone together to go to the picnic area because they were giving out free watermelon. But I've got a fear of watermelon too. Roderick is always telling me that if you eat the seeds, then a watermelon will grow in your stomach. I didn't know if he's telling the truth or not, but school's only a couple of months away, so I'm not willing to take the risk. When it started getting dark, everyone put their blanket out on the lawn to watch the fireworks display. We sat staring up at the sky for a long time, but nothing was happening. Then someone came on the loudspeaker and said that the show 
was cancelled because someone had left the fireworks out in the rain last night and they got soaked. Some little kids started to cry, so a couple of grown-ups tried to create their own fireworks show. Luckily, the fireworks display at the country club down the road started right about then. It was a little hard to see over the trees, but at that point, I don't think anyone really cared. Everyone is watching the fireworks. Ooh! Ah! Tuesday! This morning, I was sitting at the kitchen table, flipping through the comics, and I came across something that almost made me spit out my cereal. It was a two-page back-to-school ad, right where any kid could see it. Back to school. Blowout sale. Save on slacks with neck, neck sweaters, dungarees, pleated skirts, vests, and much, much more. Only at Morty's. All items 50% off. I can't believe it's actually legal to run a back-to-school ad two months before school starts. Anyone who would do that kind of thing must be, must really not like kids. I'm sure back-to-school ads are gonna start popping up all over the place now, and the next thing you know, Mom is gonna be telling me it's time to go clothes and shopping. And with mom, that's an all-day affair. Mom, these saddle shoes are on sale. So I asked mom if dad could take me clothes shopping instead, and she said yes. I think she saw it as some kind of father-son bonding opportunity. But I told dad he could just go without me and pick out whatever he wanted. Well... That was a dumb move, because Dad did all of his shopping at the pharmacy. Next to the laxatives and snoring remedies, Dad was looking at a rack of hideout patterned shirts. The sign said, Assorted Shirts. Three, four, five. Before I saw the ad, my father, or no, sorry, not my father, my day was bad enough already. It rained again this morning, so Sweetie tried to get under the covers with me after Dad took him out. I guess I must have been a little off my game, because the dog found a gap between the blanket and the bed and managed to get through. And let me tell you, there's nothing more terrifying than being trampled under your covers wearing nothing but underwear with a wet dog crawling all over you. I was stewing about the dog and that back to school ad when my whole day turned around. Mom had printed out some pictures from the 4th, and she left them lying on the kitchen table. In one of the pictures, you could see a lifeguard in the background. It was a little hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure the lifeguard was Heather Hills. Alert. Low battery. Hold on, we might have a camera malfunction. 20% low close button back camera stop rec stop recording okay, button we're still on. sorry about the delay but you can't win them all okay heather hills it was so crowded at the pool yesterday that i didn't even notice the 
the lifeguards. And if that really was Heather Hills, I can't believe I missed her. Heather Hills is the sister of Holly Hills, who is one of the cutest girls in my class, but Heather's in high school, which is a whole different league than middle school. This Heather Hills thing is changing my whole perspective on the town pool. In fact, I'm starting to rethink my whole summer. The dog has ruined all the fun of being at home, and I realize that if I don't do something quick, I won't have anything good to say about my summer holiday. So, starting tomorrow, I'm gonna have a whole new attitude, and hopefully, by the time I get back to school, I'll have a high school girlfriend, too. Wednesday. Mom was really happy I was willing to go to the pool with her and Manny today, and she said she was proud I was finally putting my family in front of video games. I didn't mention Heather Hills to Mom because I don't need her getting in the middle of my love life. When we got there, I want wanted to go straight to the pool area and see if Heather was on duty. But then I realized I'd better be prepared in case she was. So I made a pit stop in the bathroom and lathered myself in suntan oil. Then I did a bunch of push-ups and sit-ups to really make my muscles pop. I was probably in there for about 15 minutes. I was checking myself out in the mirror when I heard someone in a stall clear his throat. <coughs> Ahem? Well, that was pretty embarrassing because it meant whoever was in there could see me flexing in, the, in front of the mirror the whole time. And if that person was anything like me, he couldn't go to the bathroom until he had complete privacy. I figured the person in the stall could have or couldn't see my face, so at least he didn't know who I was. I was just about to slip out of the bathroom when I heard Mom at the front of the locker room. Mom, Greg? Gregory Heffley? Are you still in there? Mom wanted to know what took me so long and why I looked so shiny, but... I was already looking past her and scanning the lifeguard stands to see if Heather Hills was on deck. And sure enough, she was. I went right over to her and parked myself underneath her chair. Every once in a while, I'd say something witty, and I think I was definitely impressing her. Me. Hey, stop that. Does Mrs. Archiagas really think it's a good idea to wear a bikini when she's eight months pregnant? I'd get Heather a new cup of water whenever it looked like she needed a refill, and every time some kid would do something wrong, I'd speak up so that Heather didn't have to. Me, shouting at the top, oh, sorry, shouting at two boys running past, WALK! Whenever Heather's shift ended, I'd follow her to her next station. Every fourth time, I'd end up in front of where Mom was sitting. And let me tell you, 
It's not easy to be smooth when your mother is sitting five feet away. Mom, do you want me to get you something from the snack bar, honey? Honey bunches? I was hoping Heather knows that I would do anything for her. If she wants someone to put suntan lotion on her back or towel her off after she takes a dip in the pool, I'm the man for the job. I basically hung out with Heather until it was time to go. On my way home, I was thinking that if the rest of my holiday goes like today, this work this work would be the best summer ever, just like Mom predicted. In fact, the only thing that can ruin things now is the stupid muddy hand. I'm sure it'll show up at the exact wrong moment and spoil everything. Vicar, Greg Hefley, do you take Heather Hills to be your lawfully wedded wife? The muddy hand taps Greg's shoe. Wednesday. I've been hanging out with Heather ever since, oh sorry, every single day for the past week. I realized my friends at school will never believe it when I tell them about me and Heather. So I asked mom to take a picture of me standing next to the lifeguard chair. Mom didn't have her camera, so she had to use her mobile phone. But she couldn't figure out how to take a picture with it, and I ended up standing there for a long time looking like a fool. Me. Mom. Mom, press the little green button. I finally got Mom to press the right button to take a picture, but when she did, the camera was pointing the wrong way, and she took a picture of herself. See, this is why I always say that technology is wasted on grown-ups. I got Mom to point the camera at me, but right at that moment, her phone rang, and she answered it. Mom, hello? Barbara! It, is that really you? Mom talked for about five minutes, and by the time she was done, Heather was on to her next shift. But that didn't stop Mom from taking the picture anyway. As a big, hairy man climbs up to the lifeguard chair, Friday. Relying on mom for my ride to the pool is starting to become a problem. Mom doesn't want to go to the pool every day, and when she does go, she only stays a few minutes. I like to be at the pool from the time it opens until the time it closes so I can maximize my time with Heather. I wasn't about to ask Alert. Low battery. Roderick to drive me to the pool in his van because he always makes me sit in the back and there are no seats. I realized I needed my own transportation and luckily I found a solution yesterday. One of our neighbors left a bike out by the curb and I took it before anyone else could. I rode the bike home and parked it in the garage. When Dad saw it, he said it was a girl bike and I should get rid of it. But I'll tell you 
at least two reasons a girl bike is better than a boy bike. Number one, girl bikes have big, cushy seats, and that's really important when you're riding in your bathing suit. And number two, girl bikes have those baskets on the handles, which are good for carrying your video games and suntan lotion. Plus, my bike came with a bell, and that really comes in handy. Me. Ringing bell. Move along, people! And we'll shut her down there, because my battery's going to die. Thanks for coming out, and hopefully it was half decent. See ya! Low power mode. Close. Button. If I can shut it off. YouTube. Camera chooser. Stop record. Stop record.